All right, my friends, and that is the operative word tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in to Fiesta Friday because we are celebrating not only our island's rich history and culture, but also friendship. And we have a bunch of friends joining us tonight. The very lovely and very talented Moneca Flores will join us momentarily later on in the show, and she will talk about a art exhibit that she's got her very first solo piece, plus later in Kutur Parun Ratu, a very good friend of ours, celebrates art and culture right here on Guam. But another friend of ours comes all the way down from Nilao. He made the incredibly laborious trip. Thank all you very much for having me. All the way down uh, Route 4, down the exactly. overpass and everything. Exactly, so. yes. Hope yeah, that's right. Steve Vignarzik, of course, with the Guam Symphony Society. Yes. So um, another season is upon us. I assume that you guys have another year of top-notch quality entertainment. And uh, perhaps you may be putting out a call for new blood. Call, call out for some new singers. We're mm -hmm. rebuilding the Guam Symphony Community Chorale. So I'd like to issue a call out for singers. Uh, we have rehearsals on Tuesday evenings at UOG in the Fine Arts Building, room FA-127 from 7 to 9. And our first concert's coming up in October, on October 16th and 20th at the Sandcastle, Guam. And it's going to be called uh, Broadway on the Bay. So it features a variety of Broadway tunes, uh, stuff from Miss Saigon, uh, a bunch of tunes, uh, Man of La Mancha. Uh, we're going to do some stuff like New York, New York, the theme from New York, New York. Uh, now, on the bay, in, in relation to what bay? Uh, Tumon Bay. Okay, yeah. very cool. <laughs> uh, highlights from Chicago. And then we have a, some two big uh, chorale finales that we're going to be doing, uh, a tribute to Andrew Lloyd Webber and also a, a tribute to Richard Rogers. And uh, I'm very pleased to also uh, mention that Mr. Ernest Achoco will bring some of his Broadway magic to the performance also. Very nice. So it's Another friend of ours. Yeah, going to be a great, great evening of fun. Um, Sandcastle, though, we're going to be in on Wednesday and Sundays. So we have a Wednesday evening gala, uh, which starts around 6 p.m. On, on the 16th of October, and then a Sunday afternoon matinee. And we've added something new this year, actually. We're going to be having chamber music concerts between these events. So on Friday... Uh, October 18th, we're going to be doing a chamber music concert up at UOG, featuring the music of Poulenc, Schubert, and Brahms for those kind of hardcore classical fans, mm -hmm. which will start at 8 p.m. But uh, I'm here really to ask uh, if there are any singers that would like to participate in a concert at the Sandcastle and love singing Broadway musicals, uh, please come out and join us with the Guam Symphony mm -hmm. Community Chorale on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. at UOG. Now, there are so many people here, especially like Guam's younger crowd, and you know, people here, they grow up, you know, listening to, especially these days, to like island music or they listen to hard rock or, yeah. you know, the, um, uh, the crooner movement right. is really, really big here. There's uh, yeah. our, our, another friend of ours, you know, uh, Peter Duenas, I believe. Yeah, uh, there's yeah. a handful of kids, actually. That yeah, are and they're really themselves. getting into that, that whole, you yeah. know, uh, Frank Sinatra type of stuff. But, but if they've never done Broadway um, and they'd like to try it or, you know, like they, they want to expand their own horizon or their own musical palette and everything like that, how would you say they prepare themselves? Uh, they're just welcome to come to a rehearsal. The music is actually fairly easy to learn, very tuneful. It's not something more complex like a, you know, a very, like a Beethoven Ninth Symphony where you have lots of integral parts that mix together. So this stuff is very tuneful and, and uh, they would have no trouble joining and uh, kind of learning the music by rote if they mm -hmm. need to. They can pick up and learn how to read also mm -hmm. at the same time. So. Now maybe the golden age, if you would, of, of musicals being kind of 1950s, I mean, 1960s, yeah. maybe the Rodgers and Hammerstein era, mm -hmm. and moving into the early part of the you know 1970s and 80s. I mean, there's still great musicals being produced or revivals that are coming out. There's cabaret revivals, you know, and one of the best musicals that came out in the last 10, 15 years was Rent, which was an amazing, yep. amazing musical that was actually a retelling of the uh, uh, opera La Boheme by mm -hmm. Puccini, the kind, same kind of storyline. Yep. But 1950s had Rodgers and Hammerstein, Oklahoma. Uh, South Pacific, Camelot, uh, you know, Carousel, and also musicals like West Side Story and stuff like that that were coming out. And we're going to be touching on a variety of those mm -hmm. musicals, too. And again, um, I brought that up because, again, that style of singing was not only about uh, vocally telling a story, right. but it's also about, you know, there's a lot of, like, projection. And obviously, because you're doing it um, typically for the stage, uh, it's very, very big, yeah. uh, very operatic and everything. So if kids these days are, you know, like our friends coming from the uh, military, yeah. if they've got, you know, uh, more of like a band vibe to them and you know like the garage band or they perform yeah. it you know like uh, um, around the island at like yeah. various events and everything like that. Yeah. Uh, could they possibly bring their like talents to the table and maybe like add something different to the mix? And oh yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it, particularly singing in the chorus. I mean, the more the merrier. That's the mm -hmm. wonderful thing about it. The more people you have singing in the chorus, the more you know. Even if you aren't maybe particularly suited to that style, you can still sing and enjoy it too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they can definitely bring something to the table. Because some people would say like, oh, I've been singing for X number of years. I don't honestly don't know if by classical definition, if I'm a tenor, if I'm a baritone, if I'm like whatever. I love to sing. I just yeah. have never put myself in a box. Please, I invite them to come out and join and, and you know, to take, take, enjoy a rehearsal and see what, what, what goes on. So. Oh, most excellent. Because I think one of the things that's been most telling in your tenure leading the Symphony Society is um, 
there's always an interesting modernization you know, mix while staying respectful and staying true to the original work. So yeah. um, how do you plan to do that this year? You know, some fusion stuff? Or? Yeah, we're doing some fusion stuff. Um, in, in March, we're going to be doing an all Gershwin program. And Gershwin's the perfect composer because he's kind of a Broadway composer and also a classical composer at the same time. Kind of fused uh, you know, Tin Pan Alley and jazz music with more classical genres. So we've invited the uh, local pianist Elizabeth Dela Cruz to perform Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue. We're also going to be doing highlights from Porgy and Bess. And uh, you know, in, in May we're going to be doing an all opera concert too. And opera is something that kind of mixes genres too. Mm -hmm. So we always try to create a little bit of classical and a little bit of popular stuff. So we mix pop and classical all the time. Even in our seaside concert, where we do parts of the Messiah, and then we do you know stuff from the Polar Express too. So <laughs> well, nice. you get a nice little balance there, yeah. And th that always makes good for the audience. And it you always can makes identify with it. And you want to kind of demystify uh, classical music and symphonic music too. You know, it's not just for kind of a highbrow crowd. It's for everyone to enjoy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now I must ask because you know, again, you've been uh, the man in charge, and you yes. know, emphasize that. Have you ever wanted to not be the conductor anymore and kind of like get back and like be like amongst your fellow musicians and kind of like stand amongst the crowd again? Or? To be honest with you, no. Once you, once you are in charge of something, you begin to run things your own way. And uh, it's interesting, I, I have had a chance to be in an orchestra and on groups you know, playing in certain musicals and stuff like that. And you kind of want to do things your own way after a while. So that kind of urge has gone away. <laughs> <laughs> control freak, maybe? Well, I don't know. Control freak. Type A, oh, the type a personality, type a personality, we'll say, personality. Okay. Is, is the more politically correct <laughs> yes, term. Yes, okay. Yeah. Well, you know, whatever the motivation is, you're doing an absolutely fantastic job. Thank you and, very and, much. You know, thank Guam's you. appreciation of the arts has certainly benefited from your work. So. I certainly hope so. And I just want to say a special thank you to Sandcastle and Galati Group and Pippet for helping us put on this season, too. Oh. Copy Express has been helping. We have a, a bunch of sponsors, but uh, I'm very happy to, to, you know, announce that our new home, uh, as you might have heard, is the Sandcastle for this year. So. It's fantastic to be in that, that space, and uh, I'm looking forward to a fantastic and one of the best seasons yet that we've had. From a performance standpoint, uh, how are the acoustics in there? From Very, from very good. Very, very good. It's a, it's a full-size stage, which is something we haven't had before. Acoustics are great. Um, seating is great. It's just a great ambiance, too, atmosphere, you know. And another nice thing, for instance, we have the uh, Young Persons Awards concert. We have a, uh, a youth awards concert, a young persons competition. And the actual uh, awards concert is going to be in the lobby or the foyer of the Sandcastle, mm -hmm. which is a nice, elegant atmosphere with really good pianos and nice acoustics, too. So all right. just an all-around great fit for the symphony, and I'm looking forward to the year. All right, perfect. So, Steve, thanks again. Thank you. You're always welcome here. You know that. Thank you. All right, and stay tuned because we'll be back right after.